Okay, today we're talking about the five things that you need to look for in a Class B van to ensure that you have a van that can operate in the deep dead of winter. So it's important to point out first and foremost that there is no standard definition for four season in the RV industry. So it's really up to you to decide what does four season mean to you. And to be fair, every class B van out there is four season. And what I mean by that is you can use the van in four season. As you can see here, this is my 2017 Pleasure Way Ascent, and I used it all the time in the dead of winter in Quebec when it was minus 20, minus 30 degrees centigrade out. And you can see here, I had to dig it out of the snow in order to make uh, room for myself to get out. So it's perfectly capable of using any Class B in the winter. It's just a question of what are you willing to sacrifice? So for instance, for me, I wasn't able to have fresh running water inside of the coach. Everything had to be winterized, but I could actually use the toilets because I would flush with antifreeze. So I could sleep in it, cook in it, relax in it, use the toilet in it all during the winter. I just couldn't use the running water until springtime came. So that's the first thing I want everyone to realize. But if you look at these five things and, in, and when you go look at a coach, you can extend the amount of things and living that you can do in your Class B RV during the winter. So the first thing that you should look for is heated and preferably insulated holding tanks. So here we are at my ascent. We're taking a look at my, this is a 2017 ascent. And let's head underneath and take a look at what I'm talking about with regards to tanks. So these, this is the fresh water tank on my ascent. And as you can see, it's not really insulated at all. It's just sitting out in the elements and it's going to freeze because it's exposed to the elements. Um, as I pan around here to the other side, the driver's side of the van, you can see that's my gray water tank there. And you can see another view of it. Again, it's not insulated. There's no heat pads on it at all. And then the black water tank is located just forward of the gray water tank. So my coach, all of its tanks are exposed to the elements. There is no heating pad option. I could, this is a heating pad. I could get a heating pad third party. I could hook it into my DC system and I could heat the tanks. Um, and that would provide a minimal amount of protection. Like if I'm parked stationary and it drops down below freezing a little bit for the night and I, you know, don't, and maybe the next day it's also below freezing and I don't want my tanks freezing up, these heating pads will help. But really beyond that, if it gets uh, much colder than, you know, a little bit below freezing, and certainly if I'm driving down the highway and I've got all the wind coming up underneath the chassis, these heating pads aren't gonna do anything for you. But here's a picture of those heating pads on the tanks of an RV, a black and a gray tank. You can see, you can get various sizes, but these are fairly small here. This is the ideal situation. So this is a, a insulated compartment for a black tank that you see here. And this, would be, this is, is gonna fit up underneath the, uh, a cutaway chassis, not a van chassis. But you can see the tank itself is protected. There's insulation in there. And you're not gonna have any very few problems actually with this tank freezing. And a lot of times they actually duct some heat from the heater down here as well. So as you're act, as you uh, are parked and it gets really cold, as long as you've got the coach heater on, it's gonna be, these tanks are gonna be receiving some of that heat as well. So this is the ideal situation. And you're really, this is really hard to find on a class B, but it is a kind of available. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'm gonna to reveal to you my choice for the best class B for winter camping. Now, the second thing you need to look for are interior routed water lines. Let's take a look at the 2020 Pleasure Way Ascent. And here I am inside and you can see there are the water lines, they're the red and blue water lines and they are routed all the way around through the back of the RV. All the water lines are internal to the RV, which means that as long as you've got heat inside of the coach, these water lines are not gonna freeze. And here you can see those same water lines being routed over the wheel well on the driver's side heading into the bathroom. 
And that's kind of the minimal amount that you need in order to ensure that your water lines don't freeze. But an I a more ideal situation is if you've got the space like what they do on the new camp Cirrus 920 here, you can see this is the galley and you have the pipes routed along the inside. But as well, they have those radiated heat elements placed right above them to just add a little bit more heat. Here it is placed inside of the galley, the, the, the counter placed inside the galley, and there's an additional heat source. So this is the ideal situation that you want to find is interior interior water lines as well as either heat blown in from your heater like vents for that or some type of radiated heat source like this this just ensures that if the outside of the walls uh, of the van get really cold that these heating elements are going to keep those water lines from freezing now i'm not aware of any class b van at least that you can go from a dealer and buy that have uh, heating elements like this inside the walls next to the water lines Generally, what you find, if you go up underneath the van, here we are underneath my 2017 Ascent. You won't see this on the 2019, 2020. Those are exposed water lines you see there. Those are going to freeze. There's nothing wrapped around those lines at all. So in, you know, uh, cold, cold weather, those lines are going to freeze. And that's what you don't want to see. I mean, you can see them. Like if you go underneath the van and you see those, it's not the end of the world. You just need to be aware that they're going to freeze. So ideally... You're not going to see those. Next thing is no exposed dump stations. So your dump stations where you're going to dump your black and or gray tank. And again, let's take a look at my ascent. This is my dump station. You can see it's fully exposed. I'm going to lift up the flap. There you can see it. It is fully exposed. It's not insulated. There is, you know, the cold weather can freeze that stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't think about this. Let's take a look at it. This is the gray tank valve. Or, I'm sorry, this is the black tank valve. There's the valve there that you pull. And then as you follow the pipe up, that goes up into your black tank. And that whole piece uh, from the black tank all the way to the valve is exposed. There's no insulation around it. So, And that's filled up with black tank water up to the valve. And so in low enough temperatures, that's going to freeze. The piece from the valve out to the end here, generally there won't be any fluid inside of that uh, since you've already shut the valve off. This is the same thing on the gray tank. If we follow the gray tank valve, that's the, uh, there it is right there, to the gray tank to the right. And again, that little section from the gray tank to the right to the valve is going to freeze. And uh, you need to look for that. Now, as far as I'm aware, no class B that I'm aware of have protected dump stations uh, that are in heated compartments. You'll need to jump up to a class C, quote, B plus in order to get to that. So I'm not aware of any, at least that are commercially available off dealer lots that have that. So all of them kind of function this way. But as you'll see, when I talk about my top picks, some are better than others in terms of uh, how, you know, how much you're dumping. Are you dumping just black or dumping just gray? And I'll give you some tips for how you can mitigate that. The fourth thing that you want to look for is a large energy source for heating. So what I'm talking about here is either propane or diesel for heating your cab. Uh, or if you have uh, hydronic heating, heating your tanks as well. So to give you some example of why this is important, uh, Pleasureway was nice enough to send me their propane consumption for some of their units. And let's just take a quick look at that. So here you can see, this is the LP liquid propane consumption. You can see for the furnace, it's an Atwood furnace. It's a 16,000 BTU furnace, pretty good. It's gonna heat the coach pretty quickly. And it consumes 0.175 gallons per hour to run that heater. Now, if we take a look at the math behind that, then how long will my propane last? Okay, 0.175 gallons per hour. Let's say your heater's on, it's a really cold day and it's on one third duty cycle. That means for every hour, it's on 20 minutes, okay? So in a 24 hour day, that means it's on for eight hours. So it's gonna consume, in one day, it's gonna consume 1.4 gallons of propane to keep your coach heated. Now, the tank on my ascent, as an example, is 8.16 gallons, US gallons of propane. You divide that by 1.4 gallons per day and it comes out to be roughly five and a half to six days worth of propane. That, that is, if I don't use the propane for anything else, it's really cold outside and my duty cycle's running 20 minutes out of every hour. 
which it can actually run more than that. Believe me, if it's really cold, it can run, the duty cycle can be half hour out of every hour or more, but it's gonna last approximately five and a half to six days. So if I had a larger propane tank, I'd be able to be out there camping longer. All right, the fifth and final point that I'd like to talk about is insulation on the inside of the van. So keep in mind that your van is a giant heat sink. It's a giant metal body, and that metal it loves to suck the heat out from inside of your van and transfer it to, to the outside, to the environment. So what you hope for and need to look for is uh, some type of thermal break from the van's body. So that usually is in the form of some type of insulation. The better type of insulation would be like the spray foam type insulation, but there's a lot of different kinds of insulation. The key point here is that as much as possible of the interior of the van, the walls of the van are not touching the exterior walls of the van. Now, this is oftentimes impossible to know if you're going onto a dealer's lot to see, but this is an example of a panoramic van out of Quebec that's being built out. And you can see here as it's being built, how much insulation they're using. There is no exposed, the wheel wells, no part of the van's uh, outer shell is not covered. And this is gonna be great for when they put the wall panelings on because then there's a thermal break between the interior walls and the exterior walls. And that's really gonna slow down the rate at which heat is going to transfer out from the interior of the van. As well, you'll want to make sure that the flooring and the ceiling also have adequate uh, insulation as well. Those are both metal as well. Here you can see there's a layer that they're putting down on the floor here as a thermal break. And the best way to really know about this is I try to talk about this or show this in my videos, but if you go to a manufacturer's site or their Facebook page like Panoramic has, if they do good insulation, usually they will talk about it or they'll show it. Uh, and so that's always a factory tour. You can always tell, or if there's a factory tour video for that manufacturer, look for parts of the video where they're showing the insulation. Sometimes they'll highlight it if they're proud of it. Sometimes it might be just kind of in the background, but look for it because it'll give you a good idea of, of how well insulated the van is. Now, what class B van do I recommend for four season camping? Well, hands down in my book, the best van that we have to date here in August 2019 is the Winnebago Revel. And the reason why I chose the Winnebago Revel is let's step through each one of those five points in relation to the Revel NC. So the first thing, heated and preferably insulated holding tanks. So the Revel has a fresh water tank that is insulated. And in addition to that, it is exterior because we don't have a lot of space on the inside of these vans. So it is mounted to the bottom of the chassis, but it's insulated and Winnebago has chosen to use uh, an S-Bar D5 hydronic heating system. So here's a picture of it here. And the way it works is it taps fuel off your diesel tank. It fires that in that red chamber that you see there. It gets really hot. And then there's a heat exchanger with the blue that you see, which is a glycol mixture. And that glycol mixture heats up to around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they take that, uh, they take a line out from there and they run it through, as you can see here, this is not the actual tank, by the way, for the Revel. I'm just using this as an example. It, it's another RV, but here you can see the tank and that uh, piping you see there is like a glycol line and it runs along the edge of where the tank is gonna sit. So this is the insulated compartment and then the tank will sit uh, kind of around over that. And that glycol line will keep the entire tank heated uh, with 180 degree glycol mixture circulating through it. So that will give it uh, an extremely uh, good um, ability for these tanks not to freeze up even in really, not the fresh water tank, not to freeze up in really low uh, temperature conditions. Now the gray water tank on the Rebel is not insulated, but it does have the same glycol line running through it at 180 degrees. So that's good. And I'm less concerned about that because the gray water tank you can add a RV antifreeze into. So generally I think that even with an uninsulated tank, 
the Revels gray water tank is gonna be fine with that 180 degree glycolon mixture going through it. But if you're concerned, you can just add some RV antifreeze into your gray water tank, which will just lower the temperature further so that it can withstand even colder temperatures. And that's so easy to do. You just dump some down your sink uh, and it goes right into your gray water tank and it's gonna lower the temperature there. So it doesn't freeze as fast. Now, there is no black water tank on the Revel because they use a cassette toilet. Now, you can we can debate the merits of a cassette toilet, but in this particular case for four season camping, it makes a lot of sense because that cassette that you see here, when you slide it in, is stored on the inside of the coach, meaning it's a heated compartment that's heated along with the rest of the interior of the coach. So that black water tank is in no danger of freezing whatsoever. So it's a great design having a cassette toilet in the Revel for four season winter camping. All right, let's go to the next point, interior water line. If you go onto the Revel, you will see some water lines, but they are not exposed. They are bundled with the glycol line and they are wrapped in insulation. So they're going to be fine in lower temperatures because that glycol line is going to keep them nice and toasty warm and then you have the insulation wrapped around them. So I'm not personally too worried about the interior, uh, the, the water lines freezing on the Revel. Now, I should also point out, I haven't done any tests with this. I have not had a Revel to test it out in winter camping, uh, but this is just the engineer side of me looking at this saying, I think you're gonna be okay. All right, let's move to the next thing to look out for, no exposed dump station. Well, we talked about that because it's a, a, a cassette toilet for the black tank, but for the gray tank on the Revel, as you can see here, it is exposed. There's a little bit of pipe there from the valve. You see the valve there on the left to the gray tank, up to the gray tank. There's a little bit exposed, all right? But keep in mind, that amount of fluid that's in that little bit of section is being heated by the glycol line because it's directly connected up to the tank. So it's all, it's all mixing together. Uh, and then in addition, if you're really worried about that, you can again dump some RV antifreeze into the gray water tank and kind of ensure that that little piece of your uh, the dump station that's exposed uh, isn't freezing up on you. So it would be nice if they kind of wrap that section in some insulation, but I'm not terribly concerned about it simply because the gray water tank is heated and you can always dump some RV antifreeze down in there. Okay, let's talk about the fourth point, large energy source for heating. And this is one of the huge selling points for the Revel. That hydronic heat system uh, the SBAR Hydronic D5 Hydronic Heat System runs off the main diesel tank on the Revel. So it's a Sprinter, Sprinter's diesel, and that tank is around a 24, uh, 25-24 gallon tank. So let's just do the same calculation that we did before on propane. So that the SBAR unit consumes about 0.16 gallons per hour for 17,000 BTUs per hour. Let's do the same duty cycle, one-third duty cycle, eight hours per day, that's 1.28 gallons per day of diesel. Now you have a 24 gallon tank. Let's just say you're willing to burn up half of it, 12 gallons. Well, that's gonna last you about nine days. So twice as long as the propane tank on my ascent. If you're willing to take your diesel down to one quarter tank, you can go for 14 days, two whole weeks you can go heating up your tanks, heating up the interior of the coach, and you're gonna be fine. So the Revel certainly wins the cake here for having a large energy source for keeping the tanks in the interior of the coach heated. All right, the fifth and final point is insulation. The Revel has automotive grade, I'm told, again, I haven't toured the factory, but I talked to them extensively on the phone to do this uh, story. It uses automotive grade, automotive grade insulation, spray foam insulation, completely covering the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, and then Beyond that, they use an additional layer of insulation on the backside of the interior walls. So there is a complete thermal break from the exterior van walls. So they have great insulation on the Revel. But in addition, the designers also took care for some other things. So here we see on the inside, this is uh, in the galley. This is a dual paned window in the galley. Dual panes are gonna about double your R factor for heat loss. Um, on the other side, uh, in the lounge where the table is, that's another dual pane window. And then back in the bedroom, you have another dual pane window where either your head or your feet are gonna be. So these windows are gonna really slow down any heat loss. Then you have to be concerned about the 
front cab and the rear windows because those are single glaze standard windows and those are going to have some heat loss but at night Winnebago has insulated blackout shades for the front so this is going to really slow down heat loss when you have those shades up at night and then at the back they did something really cool they have a blackout shade so that's a screen package on the back of the Revel but they have this blackout shade that rolls down and it completely seals off the entire back door all the metal all the windows and everything and that provides a thermal break in the bedroom and they didn't have to do that and it's a, uh, a it's a, a great way to just further make the inside of the Revel um, more winter ready so in the final point is the Revel of course is built on the Mercedes 4x4 chassis and the 4x4 chassis I can tell you in the winter is just a godsend it's not really it's not necessary it's not required but I, for instance, if I have the non four wheel drive, same 144 inch wheelbase Mercedes chassis, and it was fine in the winter. But there was one time when I was climbing a hill in Montreal and a very fast approaching snowstorm hit. The snowplows couldn't get out. I was going up this hill. I started to lose traction. My ascent started sliding sideways and then start, started sliding backwards down the hills. Very scary. And it was only because the, the rear wheels hit a patch of asphalt that hadn't been covered yet and my rear wheels gripped and I was able to stop myself from sliding backwards. None of that would have happened if I would have had the four wheel drive option on the Mercedes chassis. I'm not saying that you're going to run into that every winter. I am saying that it's peace of mind and the fact that the Revel has it is just another feather in its cap for winter camping. So this is not a full review of the Revel. If you want to see my full review of the Revel, uh, at least the 2018 model, you can see it here. I'm going to be also reviewing the 2020 model here shortly and then talking about some of the enhancements. So the Winnebago Revel is currently my choice, August 2019, for the best Class B camper van for deep winter camping. All right, that wraps up this week's video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you all again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.